<laughs> hey everybody. Wait a second. Let people come on board. We are live and I'm super excited about today. We are going to be talking to my good friend Angie. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for joining. We'll wait a little bit for some of you folks to come in. Hello, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. I think there's a few of you that are coming on board. Uh, we have a really cool show today, a live show with Angie. Um, pretty phenomenal things that have been happening, and I'm so stoked that uh, we're going to get her to come on board. Uh, it's always fun to do those interviews, particularly in the world of canine sports. We have a lot of friends. Uh, some are very vocal, and we know all about them, and some, as you all know, we don't know a whole lot, and I think Angie kind of falls into that category that we don't know a whole lot about her unless you're a close friend, um, and I've been privileged to know uh, Angie for many years. Uh, we've been to many events. I've taken a lot of pictures of Angie. I've seen her internationally, too. So today I get to bring Angie to all of you guys. And if you know Angie, Angie will not talk much about some of the stuff that she does. And she's had some incredible successes. So I'm super stoked for you guys to be joining. Um, and it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to give you guys also some little giveaways. We love to do that. So I'll do that now. I'll do some housekeeping. So if you're joining right now, uh, down below in the notes, we're going to do, of course, a little one TDC drawing. So make sure you hashtag one TDC in the comments. And uh, if you want a copy of the show as well, just drop Doug Lover as one word. All right, let's talk. Before I bring Angie, the key thing about Angie is I can't wait for her to talk about herself. So I got to start talking about her first. So what do you need to know about Angie? Well, the one thing I would tell you is the accomplishments that she's made in the world of dog agility is pretty amazing. Many of you folks may or may not know that Angie has competed. I got my cheat sheets. So there was way too many things to remember. She's competed in 8 inches, 12 inches, 16 inches, and also 24 inches at a super high level of competition. To the best of my, my knowledge, she's the only person to have won AKC Invitational in two heights in the same year. Guess what heights? 8 inches, 16 inches. Uh, she's also, she's no stranger to AKC. She's also won na AKC Nationals four times in three different jump heights, 12 inches, 16 inches, and 24 inches. And I have to say also on the eight inches part, uh, she's got an honorable mention with a runner-up for second place. So not too shabby as well. Uh, she has also won AKC National in regular heights tw uh, twice, two regular heights in the same year with 12-inch and 24-inch, and I've got some pictures of that, so I'll be able to share. That's the fun part is many of you folks, and particularly Angie as well, I've had so many pictures over the years that I've taken of you guys. Um, clearly, huge accomplishment as well at the UKI US Open, uh, where she has won with both Echo and Sunday, 12-inch and 24 inches. While many of you guys know, and as you're looking at the picture here to my side, uh, something absolutely remarkable, I would say even phenomenal. Um, she is the first uh, and only American to ever win the uh, EO, the European Open Agility Championship for any class. So that's a pretty high level pedigree. Um, we're pretty stoked to find out how did this all happen because obviously it was not an overnight success and there's a lot of steps that it's taken there. And I told Angie, I want to know, what are your top five? I want you to be able to share that to the community of canine sports, uh, whether or not you're a high-level trained uh, competitor or you're learning. I think a lot of those top five, which I already know, um, are very applicable for, for all of us. So I think I've talked enough. It's time that we actually bring the star of the show coming on board. Uh, there she goes, coming in. Hey, Angie, thanks for coming in. Hi. I'm so excited I'm that frozen. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited you could make it. Um, I think it's it's going to be quite exciting for people to to get to know who you are. I think I look like I'm frozen, Olivier. On oh, my end. on our end, we can't see you. So if you can hear me, oh, you should. Okay. Be good. Yeah. Sometimes right. it's just a screen. Um, okay. So I was just saying, I, I'm 
get excited because you're you're the type of person that we don't get to hear a lot about. And I think you're comfortable with that. That's the part that people don't <laughs> realize as well. I'm an introvert, very, you, very big introvert. And and that's totally fine. And that's why I'm super happy that you decided to come on board. Um, right. And I think what I wanted to kind of start is, is before we go into your top five and what's brought, you know, your road to success is, um, how did you even start in dog agility? How long have you been doing it? Because I think a lot of people have no clue. Oh gosh, um, back in 2005, we we adopted our first dog. Mike was working out of town a lot. I think there was the first year we were married, he was gone probably about 10 of those months. Wow. Like, so yeah, I was kind of on my own. He was traveling and working out of town a lot. So I'm like, you know what? I want a dog. And so we adopted this dog and I was doing just some basic little pet classes and I saw a flyer on a wall and I thought, wow, that might be kind of cool to put a jump on my little tiny patch of grass for the condo we lived in and the rest is history. Oh, and that's, so that's back in 2005. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I mean, it, it didn't take long for you to start getting some successes. I'm, I'm going to pull some pictures as well here that, that I took of you. Because, I mean, there's definitely uh, some amazing times that you've had um, that I've I had the chance to capture, actually. Let me show some of this. This is you at AKC Nationals uh, with Sunday, actually. Though oh, the, that's intense. That's intense. Well, I think this may have been Gambler, actually. Let me put uh, this. That's that looks like a challenger round to oh, me. Oh, challenger round. That's right. Oh, challenger that's round. Intense running there is. Yeah, let me try to see if we can put that uh, a little bit clearer. There we go. So we can see. Yeah, this was. Uh, you want to hear a funny, a funny story about AKC Nationals when I first hit my uh, like first beginner intro to agility class with that first dog. I told the instructor because AKC Nationals had just happened. I said, I'm going to win that one day. And oh gosh, like I didn't even know what I didn't know. Right. And she goes, oh, have you, have you ever been to a competition or watched one? And I said, no, I saw it on TV. And so, oh gosh, she, she kind of humored me. She was the nicest woman like, okay, dear. Okay. I actually did win one day with that first dog, but I look That's back now and think, what was I saying? Like, that was just the dumbest thing. I didn't even know, but yeah. Obviously it wasn't the dumbest thing because it, it, it happened. You already had that, that confirmation and look at you like here where you, you've got some thought on TV. Jeez, oh, um, and with echo as well, this was, this was the year when you won AKC national with, uh, with both dogs. That, that was yeah. like, you were back to back. That was pretty incredible watching you run from one to the other. Um, love this shot of you and, and Sunday. Um, it's a little bit small for everybody to see, but th this is kind of a typical, what I've seen you run with Sunday. It's like this dog runs for you in the moment because that's what you want to do. And, and Sunday enjoys it. But that face, like <laughs> this is the face <laughs> of Sunday where it's like, mom, I'm doing this, but I've, I'm done. It's always I'm fun done. Sunday. And I think, for those of you that know you, but those that may not, the reason why Sunday is done is because Sunday is looking for somebody at that point, and it's this guy. Mike. She loves her daddy. She loves Mike. And I think it would be only fair to talk about Angie um, and, and also bring up uh, the incredibleness of, of Mike and his support. So tell us a little bit more about Mike and how does he fit into the whole picture of dog agility in your sphere? You know, he is just the most supportive in every aspect of it. Oh, um, where did Sunday even come from? From Mike. He, <laughs> That's a great story. You got to tell that story about Sunday. It's it's true. We were just kind of looking for, okay, where's my next dog going to come from? I think I want a small dog. I think I want a mix. And I came home from work one day and he said, oh, yeah, I I sent Julie Jenkins a message today and I said, wait, you, you did what? And she was Sunday's breeder and I had never had any personal interaction with Julie Jenkins. I mean, she's wonderful. I just have never interacted with her. And he said, yeah, you know, the breeder of those border rats. And I said, I know who she is, but wait, you did what? Like, it was just mind blowing to me. So now all of a sudden I'm 
wondering what did you say to her like how how did you approach this like i i was mortified like oh gosh what if he sent an email that i would be embarrassed about or whatnot and next thing you know i know no he just oh i just i sent you the drink in the message and i so what happened so so tell us so mike sends the email you don't know anything about it he figured you could get a great dog from julie and and what happens next after you ring his ears for sending an email without telling you first i mean then of course i was like so did she write you back <laughs> like now i'm all now i'm all interested because i love the idea of the litter there was one prior very similar um and i and, and i love those dogs so now of course now i'm really interested in um I'm just, I'm so glad Julie took a chance on me. I mean, because who was I, right? We had never really, I guess, had interacted, but she took a chance on me and it was, it was fantastic. That's awesome. I think many of you folks listening to this um, live will know who Julie Jenkins is. She's uh, an amazing dog trainer. Uh, yes, she is. Very highly in competition in the flyball community. And she's got champion dogs in different sports, obviously agility. Um, as well as uh, flyball, so that's that's so awesome, and, and she's also a good friend. I love Julie. She's no, she's a little bit like you, actually. It's kind of hi, like Julie. You. <laughs> if you're watching, she probably is. We have a few folks. As a matter of fact, if you are watching live right now and you put a comment, we should be able to see it. So if you got questions as we're talking for Angie, do not hesitate. Uh, SC Marilyn, Mary Ellen, hi Mary Ellen. Good to to hear from you. Um, yeah, I was saying that the thing about Julie, she's uh, she's a little bit like you. You guys have some very similar personality. You kind of know where you're saying pretty quickly. You guys are kind of no nonsense, kind of straight to the point. So uh, I think definitely has an affinity uh, between the two of you. So S- Sunday, how old is Sunday? So what happened from the time you picked up the dog and you started your training? What, what, what give us a little bit of a history leading to this incredible success uh, that you've had in in uh, Sunday's career? Sunday is eight. Um, eight years old already. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Oh, shh. Don't say that. She's just <laughs> wiser. Okay. She's wiser. That's right. Um, yeah. She was just an incredible puppy. And actually, I didn't even know that I was going to get her when I went down there. I flew down to North Carolina and there were two puppies. And I said, well, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll meet them. And then I was going home with somebody. And Mike, Mike wanted the other dog, and I was kind of leaning towards the female. And he tells me now, he goes, you knew all along which one you were getting. And I'm like, yeah, but I humored you thinking, you know, maybe maybe it would be the boy. But I, I kind of knew that the girl was for me. That's um, awesome. And, and she was. She was just an incredible puppy and so wonderful to train. I mean, anything I wanted to do, boom, let's go. And she put 150% into anything and everything. So that's awesome. That's all, I, I love the way you say that to Mike because you give him a hard time sometimes. And Mike just texts it and he is like the number one fan. He always makes me laugh because there's times when I haven't t- taken pictures or something, why I didn't do a post. And I'll hear from Mike say, You didn't see, she's about to run. You got to get your camera. You didn't <laughs> post about this. And the, the funniest part about Mike is, He's probably the only person I know that if I don't show up early, which uh, happens often at events, if Mike is around, he'll show up in the one TDC booth. <laughs> he'll be detailing the product and take pictures. So I think the it's two true. of you guys have just, it, it is. It, it, as a matter of fact, I had to get him a shirt as a result of that. He, he demanded it, which was great for us as well. Um, no, it's, He's it's more a, social than I am. Well, that's good. You guys balance each other out. Uh, yeah. For sure. Um, and so I think what I'd like to do, because, I mean, this accomplishment that you and Sunday did in Belgium is just, I think that's a huge deal for the USA. I mean, I know it must have been super exciting for you to just be on that podium. And what was fun is, you know, I've been to the EO many times, is to see the folks that are usually in that number one spot to just be on the side. No disrespect to anyone, but it was like goosebumps to get <laughs> to see that moment. I want to play um, actually that final run that you had at the, at the EO. I hope you guys will be able to see it as well um, on the screen. Let me show that and see if we can make it big enough so everyone can see it. Um, here we go. Um, hopefully you guys can still hear us. I would love for you, Angie, to 
to give it. Actually, if you guys can hear us, just if someone can give a thumbs up uh, or yeah, just a quick I, comment, that would be awesome. I would appreciate that. Um, so let me play this run so that you can actually tell us about it. And thanks, Mike. Oh, we're starting to Oh, we are. Well, we're going to fix that. Hang tight. Hang on. Let me try this again. Right, here we go. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, and I honestly didn't even think I had her right here. And then you can see as soon as she gets on the A-frame and I know I've got her, man, I just put my head down and I run for dear life. It's about all I could do at that point. And then, all right, now now I feel a little more in control. She stuck her teeter. She was wonderful. Mark that. Rear cross. You don't see it often from me, but there it was. Yeah, that's um, there we go. And now just don't even look. Tell her tunnel and don't look back. And wow. Boom. Wow. What a what a run. What a run. So you have to tell us what went through your mind if you can remember any of it in the moment and what happened when you get into that finish line. What did you know you won at that point? Like, like kind of take us back there. What what happened in your in your I honestly, I had no idea what times other people turned in. I had no clue. I didn't know what my time was. All I knew is, holy smokes, we just crushed that. Like that was, it was awesome. I knew we didn't have any faults. And how do I know? I guess I really didn't. But the cheering and the screaming kind of told me that it was a great run. And so there was no AKC must leash your dog rule. So we got to, <laughs> we got to run all the way, all the way out, just kind of, yeah, it was awesome. And then, of course, Sunday got pretty afraid, and then she tried to run away. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. Let me go. I've done my job. So, I've done my job. Um, yeah. And I know I said that earlier before you actually came on, but um, this is the very first time the United States has won for any class, any height, uh, uh, the EO. Ever. That's, that's a big deal. Really big deal. And a, a great team, too. I mean, Annette, um, who was the lead coach, um, I mean, it, it, uh, I wasn't there this one year, unfortunately, but it, it seemed like you guys had a lot of camaraderie. To tell us about that, that, that team aspect, and, and we're going to go into your top five, and I think you're going to cover some of that, but how was the environment for, for the USA in, in, in Belgium this year? I think um, this year, the USA was probably more of a cohesive unit than I've ever seen it. Nice. Like, the energy was just amazing. Um, Annette built a lot of team aspect in it, even things having us do some uh, like team building things leading up to it. We had to each present a, a skill to the rest of the team that, hey, you probably want to be comfortable with this before you go. And we'd have to buddy up and um, work on it together and present it to the rest of the team. So just little things like that, I think Annette did a really good job of bringing us all together. And so we were cheering for each other, and yeah, it was it was a great year for USA as a cohesive unit. Yeah, so a big high five to to Annette and in the team. Uh, I think that that makes a big difference for for the level of confidence. All right, so one thing I'm going to cover, and then we're going to go into your top five shortly. Here is um, what's different about you is it's to think of the high level of competition that you're doing that you've achieved probably. I mean, what you just did hasn't been done yet. And what baffles me is that you don't do this all day long. You don't have a center. You, you're not teaching, doing seminars, any of that. You're pretty much, this is a passion and a hobby, but so what, what do you do actually during the day? If this is not the full time of your work, if you, if you want to share, of course. I'm actually a high school chemistry teacher. A high school, yeah. but a lot of you guys didn't know that. So Angie is a high school yes. chemistry teacher. Yeah. That's awesome. By the way, chemicals, I light things on fire, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I told you this, but I met Naomi, my wife, um, 27 years ago, actually, in a chemistry class. So oh, chemistry, yeah. you have the magic there too. So you, you're, there you a, go. <laughs> you're a chemistry teacher. Um, 
So what does that mean? So when do you train? Do you have your own yard facility? How, how do you get your training done? Or you just go to a facility when you train? Tell us a little bit more about what your regiment and routine well, is there. We um, shortly after we got married, we moved. We bought a we bought a house, and it had this little little yard. I mean, when I say little, we I had a dog walk, and I could not fit my dog walk in my yard. Mm -hmm. Like that's it was small, and so I would have to make deals with friends with big yards. Hey, can I put my dog walk in your yard, and then I'll come over and use it, and you can use it, and that's kind of how I got my training done. And then we just we got Echo and said, a baby Border Collie needs a yard. And so when he was a few years old, we um, said, actually, Mike, just like you would expect, came home one day and said, hey, you wanna put the house up for sale? And I said, sure. And that's about how it went. Literally, we got the house ready, 48 hours later, boom, sold, and we're out. And we're like, oh crap, we don't have a new house yet. And so we ended up with this place, which is almost four acres, Nice. We tore up a chunk of it. So we have about 140, 140 feet by 240 feet of a training field. But it's outside and, well, Michigan is under snow much of the year. So I try and make the most out of my nice weather time outside. Awesome. So bottom line, again, Mike had a little in instigating in the process. Yes. Not surprised. want to move? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So let's do this. I think it's it's time for us to kind of yep. to hear from your heart what um, you've seen has been essential to your road to success, what we would consider your your top five. So if you had to start somewhere to say what has mattered to you and what has made a difference that you want to share, what would be um, number one in your, in your top five? So I want to say this too, before I start, is that anybody who knows me, like my close friends know that all five of these are like very, very near and dear to my heart. Like mm -hmm. they, they really, I mean them. And so they weren't just random things that, oh, these sound good. I try my best. Like this is, this is what we do. Um, the first one is confidence. Like that is, that is the main main thing in, in all my dogs. I had, my first dog was horribly fearful to start. And so we built confidence and mm -hmm. I carried that through to the next dog and the next dog and to Sunday and now my next dog crown. So can, can, can you, def, can you define what you mean by confidence? Is it confidence in you? Is the confidence you established with the dog or what does that mean exactly? And how do you go about it? So confidence is for me, making sure the dog is enjoying and feeling good about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think some of that is, you know, given by the handler, by the trainer, being fair in your expectations. So when you get all mad that your dog didn't do something, well, can you really take a step back and honestly ask yourself, how well did you train that? Mm -hmm. Like be fair in what you're asking your dog to do. Um, not changing 10 variables at once when you're training one thing because now your dog's confused and that leads to lack of confidence. So confidence can be all kinds of different, different angles that you take. Um, and, and things like, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so the confidence is really your focus on your dog to have this element of being confident. Is, is that yeah. what, I, I don't want to speak for you. I want to make sure that yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Like, um, I can say for Sunday, one of the things she's she's quite fast. But if you build the confidence, you keep that speed. If you kind of get mad at everything, mm. you're gonna lose it. And so, when she was young, it was, hey, you, I want you to be confident and comfortable taking chances. Like you thought that was the next thing, 150 percent at it okay. And if it wasn't, then that's on me to go back and say, well, why? Like, what did I do? But I want to keep that confidence driving at obstacles, not, not her slowing down, worried, is she going to get in trouble? You know, things like that. And that's something I see a lot of handlers do. Like mm -hmm. if they're having trouble with something, then they start picking at everything. Like mm -hmm. 
then pretty soon your dog is worried, are they going to get in trouble for this or for that? Or are you, you know, going to sound unhappy about this or that? Um, but keeping the dog's confidence and not worrying about every little thing for them to be perfect, I think is big. Yeah, that's big. Thank, thank you for sharing that. If you've just joined, obviously we're here with uh, Angie uh, learning more about uh, leading to her success, incredible success in, in dog agility. A few things. If you want to ask Angie a question, you can. Just go in your in your notes here on, on Facebook and we'll we'll catch it. And if I, hopefully I'll see it. If not, do it a couple of times before, before I see it. Uh, the other thing, too, is we always give away some 1TDC at those events. So if you drop uh, hashtag 1TDC down below, uh, we'll put you in our drawing. And if you want a copy of the show and so forth, just also put the word dog lover, one word, and then you'll get the show notes. But don't hesitate to ask uh, questions. Um, this is huge. I really enjoy what, you, what you're saying about um, confidence is key. And I, I love the fact that you put that first because in hearing you and also knowing you, that really shows the, the genuine care that you have for your, your athlete dog and, and keeping that, that rhythm and that emotional um, stability, I think, for your dog. So thank you for, for sharing that. Anything else you want to share with us about key confidence is key before um, we get to the second one? I, I do. Uh, and so one of the things that people, I think, often overlook is once their dog has confidence, they think they're done. Oh, like, oh Sunday's Sunday's sick. She's confident with X, Y, Z. She's done. She's got it. Mm -hmm. And so continuing to build that, um, for example, she's got great weaves. I still reward her weaves. I don't just expect, well, hey, she's got them. She's good. I still reward them. You know, I want to keep things like that. So as your dog gets good at something, keep telling them they're good at it. I think that keeps the confidence up, not just becoming an expectation. Mm. Uh, that's good for humans too, by the way. So that top five it is. that you've got so far, I'm thinking I, I can't like when my wife tells me when I've done something right, even if I always do it, right? So, right. Yes. Yeah. So we don't forget that for Mike too. There you go. Cool. All right. So before let's turn to your second one what would be your second one that you would say is that that's in your top five it really matters to leading to your success keep your dog in shape that's, well, that's huge that's a big statement so I, I i'm going to give the disclaimer right of the bat sunday is on one tdc it's a one tdc dog <laughs> but yes. beyond one tdc tell us about what does that mean when you say keep your dog in shape so I can say right off the bat, I know you can do everything right and still things happen, injuries happen or whatnot. I'm talking more about stacking the deck in your favor, right? Doing everything that you know you should be doing, which surprisingly, there's just a lot of people that I think overlook keeping their dog in, in shape. Um, but I mean, keeping them fit, keeping them conditioned, keeping them strong not just going and running agility on the weekends and calling that good. Um, for me, two things that are non-negotiable, warm up and cool down. That is, unless there's some sort of weird freak occurrence, those are non-negotiables. Like, would you like someone taking you out of your bed, putting you on the start line and saying, run as fast as you can? <laughs> no. I mean, some dogs can do it, but you're setting up for you know, higher injury risk, they need you to make the good decisions for them. Um, things like recovery, they need recovery, especially as they get older. Mm -hmm. You can't just pound them, you know, day in and day out. Uh, we went to practice, team practice, and I knew, I knew she was going to be running hard. And so I, I didn't go to Purina the next weekend because I, I just, I knew she's going to need some downtime as much as it would have been fun to go. I, I, I couldn't do that to her. So we skipped. Um, but again, the human needs to make good decisions for their dogs. And I think just even the basic things warm up and cool down. That's on us. We need to do that. She's eight, Olivia, eight. And she just went out and kicked butt. That's amazing. Against dogs, you know, she went I mean against dogs at her age and I think keeping her in the best possible shape, lots of warm up, lots of cool down and recovery time. 
I think what's amazing for Sunday is that you were kicking butt with Sunday when she was young, and you're kicking butt, not that it's old, but at it's a mature right. dog, middle age, right? So that's pretty remarkable. Um, I think I, I, I'd like you to drill down just a little bit more on the um, the warm up and cool down. I know there's many techniques out there. Uh, what's your routine? I mean, what do you do to warm up before you go out? What, what's your systematically? What do you do for a warm up? The first thing I do is I get her out, get her walking, get her trotting, um, usually on on leash, so that she can't just go running all around aimlessly. Um, it's kind of controlled. Let's get the blood moving. And then we do things like, you know, bending her spine around, uh, you know, active stretching and, you know, some paw shakes, get, get her shoulders going, some side stepping. Um, again, warm up those shoulders. The shoulders do so much work out there. Um, we do some reach stretches. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's got a really long back, so I like to get her back nice and stretched out. Um, we do a little bit of circle work. Um, just getting all the parts, you know, warmed up, getting them moving. You know what you're describing, and I know Sunday, obviously, as you shared, is from Julie. Uh, that sounds exactly some of the routines that I've seen Julie do, actually. So was there any uh, instruction notices? Hey, here's, here's a champion. There <laughs> Hi there. Is. Where's Mike? <laughs> Where's Mike? He, he's working. Is he? Oh, well, Mike would say hi. Well, he, he, he works from home, so he's in the next room okay, working. Okay. We won't keep it down. Um, tell me, did Julie, because what you just described, I've seen Julie actually, I, I think Julie did a video for us a while back, a few years back on this. What Did, did Sunday come, oh, look at the face. Did Sunday come with oh, instructions? Where's my dad? <laughs> where's my dad? Was, it, was there any, um, you just described some of what I've actually seen Julie do from the warm up. Was there anything that she actually shared in knowing her dogs and what she's seen work? So it just I, I have her. not heard that from her. So we must both just be on, you know, the same, the same page there. Yeah, I'll send you the video. I, she did that for us. The sidestep too, which was a big one and how to progressively mm. teach how to do that. So warm up, cool down. Is there anything specific that you do in your cool down? when uh, when you win your championships or at any time oh well. um sunday gets the attitude of okay i'm done and I said, you're, you're not done we we need to walk out we need to you know go outside we need to just kind of um just purposeful kind of let, let your body cool down let your brain cool down but yeah as far as she's concerned as soon as she's done running she's she's done i'm i'm, I'm going back to bed now but you know the, the cookies, the rewards, which then plays back into confidence, right? So these all kind of kind of go back together. Um, and then after her runs, I do I do stretch her out. I put her um, her sweat coat on her. It's a neurobalancing coat, and so nice. that goes on her for a little while. Um, but yeah, so excellent. Um, and. On and off season, one of the things that I've heard um, some of uh, my friends in dog agility, some folks are very big on having an off season, letting the dog just be a dog and rest. Uh, is that something you do as well? Or do you have a specific, obviously Michigan, when it's snowy and super cold, you're not going to be running outside and doing dog agility. Do you have a, a particular a process throughout the year that you do with your dogs and give them a break or what's usually your philosophy around? Um, I don't, I don't have a specific timeline of, you know, counting the days of a break or anything like that, but we do have kind of downtime and that's during the winter time where, you know, we're, we're under snow and we're just trying to not freeze over here. Um, but it kind of goes in, in waves for the season. So winter time is the downtime. Excellent. Anything about the food? I know, obviously, you, you have a supplement regimen, uh, but from a food standpoint, anything specific that you do for your dogs that you've seen works or? No, I think, you know, food is to each dog, right? Um, Sunday gets fed raw. All my dogs get raw. They do well on it. Um, mm -hmm. But I know some dogs don't do well on it. And so it's just kind of trial and error, whatever works for that particular dog, I think. You, you adapt. Um, yep. and, and then for a supplement, I know that Sunday obviously is a, is a one to you. And for that type of breed, a dog period on for the gum health is critical. Um, mm -hmm. is, uh, so you use, is it daily when you're using the one TDC? Have you found yourself to increase before competitions, like keeping on a loading dose? Oh, uh, we stay on a loading dose. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. In our in our higher peak points of the season. It, it's a good idea, especially like the eight years old. Uh, we usually say around the seven years old for the dog agility community to actually stay on the loading dose because they're not pets, they're athletes and they build a lot of lactic acid. So for recovery, we find that to be pretty essential. Nice. All right, let's go into your number three. And folks, if you've just joined, we are live with Angie, uh, the champion of the European Open uh, with Sunday. So we're getting to learn a little bit more about Angie and also some of her top five key points that's really led her to success. And if you just joined, if you have not done the hashtag 1TDC yet down below, please do that. Uh, we're going to raffle off a bottle of the 1TDC. And also, if you want a copy of this show and notes, uh, all you have to do is down below as well. Just put dog lover, no hashtag needed, just dog lover in one word. And it'll take you to accept to get a copy of the notes. All right, Angie, we got your number two. Let's go into your number three. Number three, you are half of the team. Well, what is that? I get it. Ah. That means that don't expect your dog to do all the work for you. <laughs> if you want them to give you 150%, you better be willing to put in a little extra effort. Um, be all in. Like when you handle, don't go through the motions. Don't phone it in. Your dog gets 100% of your focus and your effort out there. That might mean take the extra step to support them. Like, are you willing to even put in the effort to take an extra step or two if that's what they need. Mm. You know, your dog does that for you all the time where you barely give them anything and, and they save your butt and they go do 10 times more. Um, but I think you need to be willing to put in a little more effort for your dog. So be when you way. say your, your effort, um, cause I think to me, when I hear you say that it goes back to your number one, which is, um, you know, confidence is key and thinking of building that confidence. But, I, it, you know, I do photography. So the, the thing that I love in photography is to catch that moment in, in the emotion between the athlete and the handler. And there's like this emotion that, that just happens there. So I think what I'm hearing from you is if you've got this attitude, you're giving it all in with the dog. That's something that permutates in the energy, I would think, with the dog in building mm -hmm. that confidence. Yes. Yeah. They know. They know when you're mentally present or when you're just kind of sloughing your way through and doing it half ass they know for sure so i know you're very competitive obviously but you're also a strong competitor even with yourself because you and i have offline had conversations about workout routines uh, different folks that are out there rain workouts and all kinds of stuff um how much does that play in your ability to take you being half the team and staying in top shape yourself um this year of course mike we we keep coming back to mike he i i knew like hey this european open sunday's going to be eight this could be her last potentially competitive year i'm giving it everything i've got and so he says why don't you look into a personal trainer and i, I said that's that's a really good idea but this was January and I knew I had work to do before I even got to that point. Like, man, there's, there's so many changes and routines I need to get in before that's even going to be um, super helpful. But then we kind of, as it got closer, okay, well, what are we going to do? So he's helping me think about, well, you could, you know, maybe like a soccer personal trainer or, you know, maybe some people that coach football or, you know, and we're just brainstorming, you know, Mike, he just, he just wants to help out. And so, and then we, we thought about Chris Curtin, he's with Karma Fitness over in the UK. And so wow. he says, why, why don't you, why don't you contact him? And I said, okay, well, being the introvert I am, I, I'm horrified to actually reach out to people and message them. It's like huge anxiety. So I, I'd come home, did, did you message Curtin? I said, nope, not yet. Next day, did, did you message him? Uh, not yet. Meanwhile, I know I want to. I just, you know, it's kind of an anxiety point for me, reaching out. And so I finally did. And next thing you know, I've got a personal trainer. And every day in the morning, check in. Here's what you're doing today. And 
man, like the things he got me doing and ready to go for EO, I was ready for those lines, Olivier. Like I was ready. That's a that's a huge kudos to him. And uh, and I'm proud of for Mike not doing it for you this time. He yeah, got the I know. God, give you the yeah. idea of the awesome coach and let you and, and thank you for being transparent about that because I think that's for an introvert that's uh, that's very honest and you know a lot of different folks hey we have different skills and talents and sometimes you know Mike will talk to anybody and I'm kind of not oh as well. gosh <laughs> that's what not to too many people sometimes I'm like who are you talking to well I don't know that person I just met I'm like oh my gosh yeah, that's where you guys balance each other out. So, yeah, I, w I really wanted to stress that because I've known you and I for a long time, and I know that your personal training, and you're pretty intense. It was fun because I remember one time I was telling you about some training I was doing, and you were funny. You told me, yeah, I know, it, it's good. I said, but it's it's not enough. I do two of the series a day instead of one. And I'm like, what? You're crazy. <laughs> so you definitely have that extreme aspect to you. Uh, in, but in you train. know what, though, it, it was good getting um, hooked up with Kurt because I didn't really know the meaning of the word recovery and rest days because, like you said, oh, one of those two must be better. Well, no, no, two of those get you hurt. And so one of the things we focused on is trying to keep me, you know, not broken. And so there were rest days implemented and where I said, well, what can I do? And he's like, you rest. And I'm like, well. For real, what can I do? N nothing. I'm like, oh, oh, you mean it. You mean nothing. <laughs> Certainly you can't mean nothing. Oh, you do. So, so let, let's keep his name and give him uh, some kudos because I think other people, if he's got any online programs, they could probably benefit. So what's his name and where can people find him? Um, his name is Chris Curtin, um, K-E-R-T-O-N, and he's with Karma Fitness. Karma Fitness. Got it. Yeah. All right, look it up, folks. Uh, it's done wonders, obviously, for Angie, who is no stranger to working out, but uh, he was able to give you the balanced regimen that you needed, obviously, to win EO or to be ready to win EO. Awesome. Yeah. Um, again, if you just join, if you have questions for Angie, don't hesitate to uh, to drop it into uh, the notes, and we'll be glad to, uh, to bring it uh, to her. All right, so we've gone through number three. What's your number four? Number four, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. Ooh, that sounds almost metaphysical. Tell us, what does that mean? So that means the dog in front of you that day, not what you trained last week, mm. not what you think they should know, the dog in front of you right then and there, that just the two of you, no, nothing else right there. Um, I think for me, a big thing is, People like to bring baggage into their runs. And so if you have failures, mm -hmm. you you have to check that at the door, like leave it. For example, I went into, in order to make finals at EO, you have to be in the top in either jumping or agility. Well, my first 15 runs at EO were not clear. Like mm. they, I vaulted all 15 runs. And so as my last run of the weekend got was being set, Annette asked me, how do you feel about this? My friends at home were asking me, how do you feel about the course? And instead of saying, you know, boohoo, poor me, I, I can't run clean. It was, you know what, if this were in my backyard or if this were local, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even blink. I'm ready. Like the first 15 didn't matter because this is number 16. It's a clean slate. And even not at that level, how many times do you hear people say, Last time I was at 19 and a half double Qs, and then they tell you about their fault. Well, that doesn't matter. That mm. was then. This is now. Like, that has nothing to do with the run in front of you. Stay in the moment for right now. It's a clean slate. You can't, you can't keep bringing that baggage up. So, Angie, I agree with you, and I think a lot of us would agree with you, clean slate. But that's easily said, but not always easy to get your sure. mind doing that. So that's, do you have, how do you do it? I know you're a chemistry teacher, but still, come on, tell us for the. For I honestly, I don't know. I just do. You, mm. you walk to the line and there's, there's really, there's nothing like you can't, you can't control what other people are doing. You have to let go of, you know, your last time you were sitting in 19 and a half double Qs. I have to let go 
the last 15 non-clear runs because I, I came to do the best with my dog. That run doesn't matter. It just, it's gone. Let it go in a balloon. And I do think it's important to say too, you have to process the failure first. I'm mm. not saying you just forget it. So I processed it. My last run, my fault was a throttle, which again, dog in front of you, that is her strongest skill, Olivia. Like, man, she knocks it out of the park. We've got that. She didn't have it for whatever reason that last run. So I acted accordingly. In my in my finals run, I didn't do a throttle in the opening, even though that's her strongest skill. I'm like, well, not this weekend. It's not end of story. Find something else. And so I actually went to my weaker skill in that opening. So but, you, sorry to interrupt you. You went back again to your number one confidence of your dog, wherever <laughs> there is to go back and bring that level of confidence in your dog. Yeah, she didn't have it for whatever reason that last run. And so I'm not going back and doing it again because, mm -hmm. I, hey, dog in front of me right now. So find something else. So process and then let it go and move on. You yeah, got to process no. it. First. No, that's great insight. Is there anything specifically? I know a lot of folks have their routine. Like, you know, some folks will kiss the dog. They'll talk to the dog before they go on. Do you have anything specific you do before you get out there with your dog and launch for for like bigger events and things like that i i know this might sound silly but i always tell my dog thank you like mm. thank you for coming and playing this game with me she didn't sign up i know she loves running with me but thank you like i'm here i'm running on this stage because she wants to be there but that circles back around to confidence right yeah. i'm letting her know that i appreciate her and i i enjoy being out there with her, again, they know it. They know when you're just kind of phoning it in and they know when you really, really love being with them. So wow. that's that's great. Again, I think that's just applicable for humans as well. So it's not just it about is. you, it's about what you're doing with the person or in this case, obviously with your athlete. And uh, right. and your dog senses that, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we know that they sense your emotions. Um, now that's 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 really great. Uh, staying in the moment, um, and I love what you shared about processing as well. So it's not ignoring or uh, putting your head under the sand about what's not working. You process right. it to adjust to go back to confidence, which is key. That's 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 awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, all right, we are ready for your last one. one. Set your own bar. All right. You're going to have to explain exactly what that means to you. Okay. So that means your bar of success, and that's going to be different for even each of your dogs. So it's not my mm -hmm. bar of success it's for that dog. So um, like crown, my young dog has a different bar of success than Sunday does. And I think it's you, you have to set what your standards are of what's going to be successful for you. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say, you need to be respectful of other people's bars. Like that's, that's a big one for me. You don't get to tell me what my bar of success is and I don't get to tell you for your bar. Um, like if somebody decides, hey, a start line, that is my goal. And they walk away with a great start line. I don't get to say, yeah, but you didn't qualify. Mm. You know, did you know that you messed up here? No, that's not my bar. That's, that's their bar. But in turn, if my bar is not having a super wide turn to Timbuktu, then you don't get to tell me, yeah, but you still won and qualified, you know, one by five seconds, but that wasn't my bar, right? We have to be respectful of people's bars, winning and qualifying. I don't really care about that. If my goal was something else in the course, I get to choose that and you get to choose yours and we need to be mutually respectful of other people's bars. Mm. So that's, um, I think that's very well said and, and frankly also encouraging to your point, right? It's respecting and encouraging people where they are. Um, definitely. Yeah, I think, I think also people judge their success by other people's bars. Mm. So for example, if you, if you know, you've got a skill really well trained and you feel badly because you, you just couldn't get the job done and somebody else says, yeah, but, everybody messed up there. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm not everybody. I know what I trained. Other people failing at something doesn't change my bar. My bar doesn't lower because somebody else messed up. My bar stays the way it is, right? 
we have different different bars so don't judge yourself by somebody else's bar and that means higher or lower it means both ways yeah no that's that's great thank you for saying that and I, I think you're right um because we always have the pressure of what other people are going to think of right. you know am i up to their bar which frankly doesn't help with the confidence with your dog when you do it because you end up pressuring right. things in places that you you shouldn't do really uh, yeah. really love that actually and bonnie thanks for your message um she just said uh, she love set your own bar she said it's so helpful I mean, they seem basic, but the actual implementation in doing that consistently, I think, is 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 the key. Um, so obviously, I want to know before you went to the EO, what bar did you set? I honestly, Olivia, I didn't set a bar. I uh -huh. said, like, I don't, I don't have an outcome goal. Of course, we all want to go and we we want to win or we want to do well. I go and I run my dog. Like, that's all I can do. I'm going to go and run my dog to the best of my ability. And after that, I can't control anything else. I can't say, well, my goal is to win because I can have, for example, that run, that finals run was amazing. Mm -hmm. If somebody else had beaten it, that run wouldn't have been any less amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's at third place, it was still amazing. It didn't change based on somebody else's actions. And I think, um, a lot of people, I, I hear them do that. They're super happy with their run until somebody else does something. And then all of a sudden they're not happy with it anymore. Like you can't control that. So mm -hmm. my bar was I'm going to run my dog the way that I know I can run my dog. And that means, you know, pedal to the metal, everything we've got. And after that, it's, it's not on me. Like there's nothing else I can do. Yeah, I remember before you went to the EO, actually, you and I were uh, messaging and, and thank you. Told us, Just go have fun, right? I mean, the EO is an amazing experience anyways for anyone who gets to go there. And I think the part that has always impressed me that I see in Europe, like the AWC, the EO, um, and the big UKI Open is that's exactly what people do. Pedal to the metal. It's like we're not trying to secure. We're going all out and yeah. i think it, oh, it, 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 there's an ambience about that too it's like i mean there's so many people that that eat but it's just like hey you know what they give it all they got and you're right they do appreciate some of the great moments that took place it's not just like you eat it's like you give it all you had and, that, and that's an atmosphere that sometimes is difficult to replicate uh unless everyone is in that same uh mindset so yeah you you definitely fit for that yeah just all out that's that's the joy of it, you know. You're gonna. So the the question. Go big now, or go home, right? Go that's right. Go home. Well, but then here's the deal. You just won the EO. What's the next bar? The next bar, you know, we we took some a little time off. I kind of got myself decompressed. Sunday got to decompress, and we're getting ready for the U.S. Open, and tryouts. Tryouts happens a couple weeks after that, first weekend of December. Although that's kind of nice because as the winner of EO, I get an automatic trip to the finals. I will be the last dog to run in the finals in Denmark next year. Wow, that's so awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to um, point number three or point number two, keep my dog in shape. Like that's, that's part of my big goal is she's eight, right? I need to keep her sound, keep her physically strong um, mm -hmm. until next July. Right. So really be aware of kind of what I'm doing with her. But yeah, next bar. So how long do you see yourself doing dog agility? Is this just part of your life and as long as you possibly can? What does a dog agility mean to you and how much of it is in your daily life? You know, you just ask, how long do I see myself doing it? Did you miss point number four? Stay in the moment, my friend. Stay in the moment. <laughs> That's right. You'll drive yourself crazy if you try and think of, you know, all that. At least that's what I tell myself. So I'm not going to let myself go there. Um, you know, people had asked, was that going to be Sunday's last EO because she was eight? Well, I, I can't I can't let myself really go too far in the future or, man, I'll be a hot mess. So brings me back to number four. Stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. That's right. And um yeah, and I think what's I, I really love uh, the the wisdom that you're sharing in in really being into 
um, that confidence with the dog. I really, really love that. And, and it's really something you see when you're around you at a competition um, is, you know, that sense of really, really caring for, for the dog. And I think that's, that's carried through in everything that you're doing actually at, at, at competitions. It's very obvious. So it's, it's fun to watch you. I always love taking pictures of you guys. And, uh, and I think you have a unique structure with, like we talked about Mike. I mean, I think it's, uh, he's such a strong supporter and, and where you guys balance each other off. So, best, the yeah. best. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely awesome. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time. I would say for an introvert, you've done amazing. So I'm very thankful that you got to open up. You did great. And uh, you went beyond the bar that I expected. So how's that? <laughs> well, there you go. Set your own bar. So thanks, uh, everyone, for joining. If there's more questions down below, we'll make sure we'll get uh, that answered by Angie. And if you haven't done it, do it right away. Um, do the hashtag 1TDC. Uh, down below and also dog lover one word no hashtag that'll get you information um for for the show and you get a copy of it in past shows that we've done so angie i think a lot of people are thankful that you came on board and get to learn a lot from you and i think this will be something that can be shared a lot too because i, I really think your top five maybe we'll make a little uh, one image on it i think it's very very significant so thank you for taking the time and I thanks for having me it was fun at any time you're invited anytime Thanks, Angie. And it was hard to get it down to five, just so you know. But I, those five are near and dear to me, so I mean them. We can tell. Thank you, Angie. We'll see you next time. Thanks.